Excellent. Welcome everyone to our Chaos Community Call on December 10, 2019. Let's check the Google Doc. So let's make sure we have everyone who is here listed as an attendee. The first thing I want to ask is if anyone wants to have a meeting on the 24th or the 31st. <laughs> well, as long as my blood alcohol content isn't a problem on either of those days, that would be fine. I would I'm like not... kidding. I'm kidding. I guess Christmas Eve would be no problem, but New Year's Eve probably not. Neither one's probably a good day to have a meeting in New York. I would, uh, I would like all of you to be there, but uh, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> I endorse Kevin. Okay, and you'll log on just for a second <laughs> to make sure we're all there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we're entering a nice season with some breaks, so no meetings on December. 24th or 31st. And then the next meeting is again on the... Then, I, then I'll celebrate my birthday at least. What's your birthday? December 31st. Uh, for tax reasons, that well, if you were born in the United States for tax reasons, that would have been a bonus for your parents. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, next meeting is January 6th, then, is that right? We have one more next or week. Or 7th. Oh, next week, right, right. Yeah, and then here, let's deep break. I can't remember. I'm, I may not be calculating days, right? Yeah, I'll miss the one next week because I'm going to be. That's when I start my Christmas holidays is Monday. Good for yeah. you. I and love Europe. I'm out for like two and a half weeks. It's going to be glorious. Uh, I'll come back until after the first. Yeah, you don't think about us at all. <laughs> um, vacation starts on the 21st, and then I come back on the 14th of January. So I still take the first two weeks of January off. Excellent. Nice. It's also, I go to Europe and then I stay in Europe and then we have pause then. <laughs> yeah, good idea. So. so we have as the next item we can talk about the upcoming metrics release. We have um, a deadline we set ourselves a deadline to freeze metrics on the 31st. So we have 21 more days, but really one more week. So. Well, I plan to be finishing risk and uh, evolution metrics right up until the 31st, uh, given my schedule and uh, trying to get pull requests approved asynchronously during that time. I think ad additionally, if we, uh, if we share the Google Doc URLs within the uh, release sheet, we can probably uh, encourage a lot of people to help out in that last, that last push. Mm -hmm. Because don't we? Um, if our next if our next meeting after after the deadline is Tuesday the seventh, then do or don't we need to do we need this meeting to say, yep, bingo, this is the set that we're going to release for for uh, review, or are we trying to have a? But we are trying to have the full release the month. I guess we're trying to have the month review period completed before FOSDEM as well, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. hmm. So. I mean, I guess the scenario that I'm thinking of is if a last time this happened and I expect it to happen this time, there'll be groups that have or metrics that they think ought to be really, I guess that's what the review period is for. I'll shut up. 
if, uh, if metrics needed to be iterated on, they could be iterated on during the review period. That's the whole point. I'm just going to be quiet now. You got it. <laughs> um, but the review period is really to hone in on the ones that we tag for not to add any new metrics at that point. Right. And this should be in reasonably good shape when we go into that. Yeah. Review. But they will change. I mean, for sure, people have feedback. Yeah, I, I recall just mostly the diversity of uh, detail level and uh, manner of description that the different working groups employed required iteration. But again, that is what it's review period is for, so shut up. Yeah. So I have a question for Kevin because he is the master of the website. Um, what are we doing for the candidate release? Last time we had all of the metrics added to the website as release <clears throat> before we completed them. And that was because it was our first release and that was easy to do without confusing people, but now that's not the case, right? Yeah, that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, yeah. That's Kevin, is there a way that we could easily generate a, a release candidate page separately without completely breaking your flow? Uh, yes. Yeah. I was actually just, uh, when you brought that up, I was thinking the same thing. It's just, I think we just have to add another page. So one of them is the, the current release and the other one is the release candidate page. And uh, after, the, after the review period, we can make one of them go away. Suppose. So, or we can we can archive. We could have an archive page, I suppose, as well. Archive. Well, the archive. I think we had discussed Please. archiving as uh, PDFs. Is so, is, what was archive? When you mean when you say archiving, can you clarify what you mean? Archiving the previous release. So right. the way I see. So if the if a metric is updated, it all metrics get a new release number, whether or not they've been updated. Is that the case? Because they're part uh, of a package. Yeah, as far as the uh, as far as the website is concerned, uh, each release uh, is completely new for everything, uh, or is completely new, right? So I will re-release right. metrics that have been released prior. Uh, yeah, it's a new it, release number. Yeah. If it doesn't change, it doesn't matter. It's just a new release number, just like an API that I published for a software package. That metaphor probably makes less sense to you. I'm sorry. Don knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and I like the idea of just providing a PDF um, of the release. So I put in the minutes, the PDF we have for the version one release. And it's listed on the metrics page. We just add a new item, basically, and then have two PDFs, one for the first and one for the second. But the website itself has always the most current released version. That makes sense. So the question I have is when we add a candidate page, you know, something like chaos.community slash metrics dash uh, candidate or RC is I think what we did last year. Do we want to um, create release candidate pages for all of the metrics? I think one page that is a link to all the metrics would be easier for people to navigate. And I think that's what we did before, right? Or did we create, we actually create, because we had the one page and then you just would click on the, on the focus group or the working group and then it would scroll down that page to the release metrics for that group, but it was all on one page. And I think that's still the case for the released metrics even. Am I wrong, Kevin? Uh, 
Uh, no, you're, you're right. There's there's one page that kind of organizes the entire release. Uh, and then currently the way we have it set up is that uh, there is actually a, a individual web page for each metric that's released, right? Which will become, that will become uh, fairly uh, monolithic at some point. What do you mean it becomes monolithic? Uh, well, you know, the website, it's a WordPress website and, uh, you know, page management is kind of weird. Yeah. WordPress. So, you know, right now, if we go and we look at our, at the, at the way it's the, the file structure within that WordPress website, you know, we probably have like 50 pages. Uh, right. And if a detail page adds a, another page to it, you know, the, as far as the website is concerned, it's, you know, we're going to get up to 150 pages probably pretty quick. And uh, WordPress does not really uh, manage that structure all that well. It's, it's not built for that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that you're dealing with all that crap. Thank you. <laughs> so what would the proposal then be? We have the metrics RC page. I, I would propose that we do whatever is easiest for Kevin to manage so that once the release metrics are approved and they go into the publish set, that it requires the least amount of work for Kevin. Well, uh, I guess, I guess as far as, as far as this release goes, I would, uh, I would kind of like to model it after the previous release, uh, with the, uh, with the caveat that in the future we are going to have to, as these releases get more complex, we're going to have to figure out a uh, a more streamlined way of doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that may include migrating to a different web platform, or uh, but I think I don't I don't think we need to make that determination right now. Yeah, in the past. I know Toby had also suggested to generate the release metrics directly from the repository and then have, have that be the HTML pages. So it's something we can right. talk about again, maybe in the spring. Yeah. Can so I ask one more question about that? If there are metrics that have changed, and I think there's a few that have, well, all of the metrics that we published have been reorganized uh, to the standard template. So we should put that in the release notes. Like we should have a release notes page for this metrics release. And I don't think it needs to be more detailed than version one metrics are restructured to a common format. And then I think if anyone's aware of any fundamental changes to what a metric is, which I don't think we've made any, we should note that in the release notes as well. So that when people go to the version one of our metrics and they see that the version two looks different, like really different structurally, that they can see in a release notes document somewhere what that's about. So they don't think that the whole the whole commute, the whole ecosystem of metrics is fundamentally going to change every release. Yeah, I think it's good practice. I was just thinking, I was just thinking about release notes as well. I think it's good practice, especially as if any of the metrics change in future releases to be able to have some kind of record of, of what changed and make it easier for people to find. Yeah. Well, yeah. I completely agree. I mean, because what happens with software, if, some, if you don't put it in the release notes and you fundamentally change the way something works, I'm just, I don't trust you anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yep. Our contract is broken and now I don't know what you're going to do to me next. Okay. I, I second the idea of release notes. And in the Google Doc in our minutes, um, I started to outline them, how we could structure them. Um, so we could say something like we changed all metrics to the template. Then we moved or renamed the following metrics and then we list the original name and the new name. And then we can also talk about we restructured the focus areas and we talk about how they are restructured. 
Um, the and, and Kevin, if, if, if you want summaries of the commit logs for each metric that's been released, I, I think we have two tools in the chaos ecosystem that could tell you that. So are you wanting for, so for that level of detail, are you wanting that on the website or are you just wanting that as a, a document we hold in the, uh, the repository? I think release notes should be a link uh, probably near the top of each new release of metrics from here forward to a different document that's in the website repository. Okay. But gets uh, summarized and I can help you with the generation of, of that right. document as could Georg or Jesus or right. any one of a number of people in this call. But like like everything on the website, I uh, I can I can pull it from Markdown, so the the document can be created uh, in the repo, and then and then I can I can grab whatever we need uh, and drop it on the website. There there's a well, as a side note, should I mention this now? In Augur, we're using a little GitHub plugin that just every time we do a release, it actually creates a summary of all the pull requests and commits that are included in that release, which is helpful for going back and trying to describe in plain English what it is we changed. Um, sorry, we might consider something like that. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I, I straight raised my hand and I, I usually rudely interrupt by accident, I apologize. <laughs> Uh, so uh, just just um, the problem I'm, I'm seeing with the commits is that you, you have to really use a tool that will sort of sort them based on file. M most tools look at a repo as a project and, and they, they cater those tools to create a changelog.md in the root of the repo. Um, yep. As opposed to, uh, you know, we changed this document by this because we're, we're not really using uh, like we're using repos, but we're working on document units, not on. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, I agree. Cool? I vol. I guess I was volunteering to help Kevin with that translation. Okay. And Kevin, I think that re the release. Don, what do you think? I think the release notes could just be a separate document on the website that's linked to each release. Would that be the way to do it? Or would it yeah, be a cumulative was, single document where it would just like a piece of software where it just builds on top of each other? I've typi I typically see it as a single document and we could create uh, links to the release notes for the particular individual release. Release. Yeah. It's like a bookmark on the, the yeah, one yeah. single progressive release notes and then we just link yeah. to a, that place for that release. Yeah. So Kevin, yeah. you'd have one release notes document on the website forever and we would just cumulatively add to it. How does WordPress handle uh, really large pages? <laughs> you mean like an infinite scroll? Yeah. Yeah. It uh, seems to be what it was designed for. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I've never had any problems with with WordPress and and yeah, long pages or or lots of pages to be honest. But uh, my WordPress sites are smaller by comparison. Well, Sala, do you want to talk about the link you just shared? Uh, yeah, so I've been I've been teaching myself to keep a change log because I, I really suck at that. And um, <laughs> with this site, keep it, keepchangelog.com, it actually starts off by saying, keep a change log. Uh, don't let your friends dump git logs into change logs, right? So yeah. I, I, I really did not have that on my mind as I posted the link. Um, but um, basically, I, I think if we're going to do this idea of a markdown file, that has release notes. Um, keep a keep a changelog.com talks about this again being the changelog of the product. Um, so if we want to go close to convention, uh, but but account for the fact that we're talking about documents, 
um, then I think you know we can we can just add a header level. Under each release, there is the first header talks about which document, um, and then you know under it you can have changes or or you can have bullet items um, because they divide each each version uh, by the kind of change. Is that an addition, a change, a deprecation, remove, fix, security, and so forth? Um, so um, seeing that change logs here would be almost always revisions or additions, um, or yeah, no, I mean everything but security and um, I don't know, fixed maybe. Um, so, so it's just trying to take this as a, as a base template and see how we're gonna further divide in documents level. Um, so yeah, that's it. Oh my God, thank you, Georg. I was like, nobody's taking notes. Yes, because we are <laughs> not in December so, 17 yet. Sorry, I'm sorry. No worries. Yeah. Okay, so I, I like the idea of using the conventions here. Um, having the types of changes like added, changed, depre deprecated, removed, fixed. I don't know if we need security. <laughs> um, but yeah. Okay. So then for the, during the review period, we have two pages that we have to add to the website. One is for the change log and one is for the new metrics candidate, the, the release yes. candidate. But then from that metrics RC page, we link out to the original markdown files in the repository. So during the review period, we don't see any issues with markdown being rendered on WordPress. That's, that's correct. We did, we sent people straight back to the repos last time and then we asked them to open issues. <clears throat> <laughs> that the working groups could then exist uh, address during the review period. Actually, we we pre created the issues and linked. Uh, oh, that's right, from we the did to the uh, to the issues. So I, I, like, I think that worked back, well. Yeah, yeah I think that worked really well. Okay, so then the, the working groups need to create the issues or someone has to create for the working groups. Um, create a link inside of every metric markdown to link to that um, issue for feedback. And after, once we finish the review period, we remove that reference to the issue, we close the issues, um, and then we create a new tag, release tag in the repositories, and then Kevin goes into the metrics pages on WordPress, updates the version tag that it pulls the markdown from, and create new pages for the new metrics or changes names for metrics that change names, and then moves the um, the metrics RC page over to the metrics page, and then we delete the old metrics page. Is that the correct process then?
Kevin Sounds is the right. one that can answer that. It sounded right to me, but Kevin's one has to push all the buttons. Yeah, that, that sounds right. Okay. Sorry, I, I'm a little distracted. I was, I was looking at the, the previous release documents to... Yeah, no worries. Let's see what was there. I just want to make sure that we know the process that we want to follow and to identify if there are things that we still need to do in preparation and things that we as a community can do versus the things that are bound to be done by one person. Kevin. Okay, so release process. I'm gonna write out the steps. Um, Kevin creates the metrics RC page. For the for the release notes page, that might be a good place to store the uh, the previous previous release versions as well. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so under on the website under metrics, we'll have a, a drop down that'll have uh, two. Uh, well, actually, I guess it'll be three choices at this point. So it'll be the uh, the current release, the release candidate, and then the release notes. I see. Okay. And then we just reduce it to two items in the menu after the release. Right. And the, and the previous release PDF download can be part of the, uh, the release notes document. Yes. What's a better word, release notes or change log? John's talking, but he's on mute. I said, sorry, I muted myself because I was trying to type some notes. Don, what do you think was actually my question? Uh, I, I tend to prefer release notes. I think it's probably a little bit more consistent with the fact that, you know, what we're, how we refer to them as, as releases. Mm -hmm. But I, I could go either way. I don't think it's super important. Yeah, I was going to say release notes, but I don't work at a software company, so I wanted that perspective, not some academic sitting in Tokyo pretending to be Bill Murray. <laughs> I think I think change log maybe describes a level of detail that we don't want to get into for that document. Yeah, if we can avoid detail, you know, informative, useful, like uh, Salah suggested, but not yeah. I, I, I think you go from a change log and you write your release notes. Um, so change log is what you keep internally to, to have all the notes generated as you are making changes so that when it's time to write release notes, um, you just have everything you can reflect on. But certainly this has to be addressed um, as a document of release, you know, like, like it, it has to be authored um, and not, not just uh, generated or uh, renamed. I'm writing at the bottom of the minutes document to document all the steps that we just uh, talked about. Who is, so, okay, we also need to work in groups.
Do we, um, probably we should just scan through each of the work. You mean working groups, right, Georg? Uh, what item are you talking about? Uh, I thought you just said talking through groups, but I wasn't following the agenda. I was listening to you, so. Oh, at the bottom of oh. our um, minutes for today, I have yeah, I see. the process, and that's where I'm writing out what the steps are and who's doing what. Yep. Yeah. So I said I said I would help Kevin translate the change log, commit log into some release notes or at least help him build a process for coherently doing that. Like I can I can be very helpful specifically with evolution and risk. Um, <clears throat> I can I can be somewhat helpful to describe common uh but obviously Don's more familiar with that one. I wonder, I wonder if that, uh, that task should actually be left to each working group. To and then you the, consolidate by the release notes and then I can consolidate into one. I think, so I think, I think maybe we asked them to supply release notes with the specifications that we described. And then I still think after that, Kevin, before we re release the release notes, you and I, or you and somebody with, familiarity with that process and software needs to go through and like um, so I was suggesting you know create a human readable set of release notes because they'll, 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 they'll vary as much as the metrics although I guess again that can happen during the review period right yeah so we could have candidate release net would that I haven't done that before with software but I guess it it almost makes sense in this case to have sort of like a draft release notes for this release that would get edited along with changes that come along. Yeah, I like that idea. The release notes can be part of the um, part of the review process. People can comment on the release notes and make suggestions as well. I don't see why not. Yeah, and it's a it's a it's a good idea. I think from a, I mean, there may be small changes that got made to previously released metrics that don't seem like a big deal that somebody notices actually are. Um, so that would, that would give people a chance to make sure that's in there. So mm -hmm. if we're, if we're going to ask the working groups to, to build that release note document for, for each group, do we need to provide them a template or do we want to just see what they I, give us? And then we look at it and put it into a uh, kind of, I think that keep change log uh, note that Salah provided is a pretty good guideline for um, there's also for people. Example, sorry, there's also an example link that shows how they went from change logs to uh, structured by topic. Uh, I added that link. It's like the WebKit. Uh, Safari has release notes, and they look very much like the opposite of the change log format, where they sorted everything by topic. Not, not necessarily by uh, what kind of change it was. Um, so so I, I, I figure every header here, like uh, web animations and so forth, those would be the different working groups. Um, then they could have even subheadings, like down at the bottom with elements. Um, that would be one metric. And it doesn't have to be a bullet point. It could actually be uh, you know, header three if that's two and so forth. And I think, I think it's important when we communicate with the working groups that we emphasize that for already released metrics, the change log is not need, doesn't need to describe everything. It just needs to describe anything that has changed about, metri about a metric um, so they don't feel like they need to go back and do a change. Because you don't do a change log for your first release. Yeah, and I think we do definitely provide them with kind of a kind of a template like what Georg was sort of sketching out in the notes because there are some things that are pretty common across all of the working groups, like the new templates, for example. Where is it? Is that the okay? So like I'm gonna make this like bold. I'm only doing that because because a lot, like for people like me, I'll, I'll read through the notes, but I won't, when they're structured like this, I won't necessarily recognize which things are super important for me to pay attention to. And so, 
not concise writing. which meeting minutes never are. Well, especially when I take the meeting minutes, they're way too detailed. But that's... that's the opposite is true when I take the meeting notes. <laughs> <laughs> Attendance topics, we're done. <laughs> I, um, I could never have any kind of notes anywhere. Like I, I'm the person who never had to write notes because when they did, they forgot what they wanted to write and they couldn't read it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we have the release process. Um, pretty complete describe, I think. Unless there, we forgot any steps. But we'll That's more detailed than we had before we started, so I think it's good. <laughs> I guess there's one question that should be um, uh, articulated to everyone. Um, how much traceability uh, do you want to involve in all aspects of the process? So when you're when you're documenting, do you want people to say issue number whatever? Like, do you want to go? relate every single thought that is in release notes and stuff like that to where people can go back and say, hey, that's why they made it that way. No? Okay. I think the audience for this would be like totally confused by that and not willing to go back and look at the chain anyway. Yeah, I think we need to keep things relatively simple. People can always go back through and look at the, the Git history to get the details if they wanted it. But I think our yeah. audience for this is probably... Yeah. I, I mean, just aligning that vision with everyone so that, you know, pe people will have different uh, preferences, right? So just agreeing on one um, um, strategy there with whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, thanks for bringing that up, Saleh. That's a really good point. And I was vigorously shaking my head because I know we are making changes without documenting why and when and where and the issues that we have are not yeah. descriptive and so i don't think trying to reach that level of detail in the release notes would not serve anyone yeah it, it uh, would, we're actually losing focus of real issues that did not get documented properly and yeah great uh, although i think those i think we should share those two links prominently with the working group leaders in some fashion so that because i think those two leases that those links that Salah shared are extremely helpful. Like for me, I learned best from some examples and these are two really clear specific examples and we can wrap it around what we're trying to do, what we just discussed. Yeah, I'll bring it up in the common working group. I just added it to the, to the agenda to talk about release notes. Excellent. So, so we spent a lot of time talking about release, which is super important. Um, just a time check where 15 to 20 minutes away from the end of the hour. Do we need to talk about chaos con or any other, are there other things that we need to talk about or should we keep talking about release? So I feel we're like we're, I feel like we're done with release, but maybe Georg doesn't. Uh, I got the questions answered that I came with for uh, making sure we have the process defined and how we're going to do the preview and the release candidate. So yeah, moving on to other topics. Chaos Con, the committee met last week to put together a um, schedule and decide on which 
submissions to accept. And I think um, invites have been sent out. They have. I, I got one. Do you know, you probably don't know, Georg, but do you know if, if there was a multiple author submission, if both authors got emails? I suspect not because we only asked for the email of the first author. That's true. Good point. <laughs> yep. Um, a better memory would have answered that question for me. <laughs> That's all right. Um, we know most of the people who submitted, so it's perfectly reasonable to s expect that we pull the email addresses somehow. But no, I don't think so. Um, so invites are sent out. The next step would be to wait for replies. Are we tracking those anywhere? Was, was there if a... If I remember correctly, the uh, response email is actually yours, isn't it? Isn't it contact uh, your link? It was last year, but I, I didn't receive a... Well, for, the, for a few of the... Uh, for a few of the uh, uh, talks, we had asked them if they wanted to do a uh, lightning talk instead, and I, I think there was the there was a request for them to respond, and the res the respond was to your email, right? Mm. I'm looking at the template right now that Ray had shared, and it only says to email me the presentations. It did not ask to confirm that they are actually presenting. So that's... So we need to do that before we put the stuff on the website. That's, yeah. So follow up email? Yeah, if we didn't give them anyone to confirm with or ask them to register as confirmation, then we do need to do something to confirm. Should we follow up with uh, with Ray to do that? I'm doing that right now. I'm okay, perfect. In the, in the Google Doc where we put together the text, I'm um, adding a comment for him. Okay. And tagging him, and then I'll send him an email afterwards. <laughs> All the channels. <laughs> perfect. Thank you. Okay, perfect. I made the comment there. Let's see. Um, what else? Chaos Con. So we need the confirmations, then we can publish the schedule. Uh, Kevin, on the website, did you take down the CFP? I believe it's still there. Uh, do we need, did we have images for the presenters last year as well? Yes, we do. And the way that I do that is I resize the image to exactly what we need and then I included that in the uh, markdown the link and I upload it to the website repo and that way we can pull it directly from the GitHub page that it creates and we don't have to upload it to WordPress. So in the in the confirmation email that we're sending, do we need to request a picture and a short bio as well? No, that's all in the CFP. We've already gathered the picture and the bio. So okay. that that should be in the the CFP doc. Yeah, um, that do you was have, requested. Do you have access to that, Kevin? The the form. Maybe you don't. Yeah. I don't think I do. Okay. It's in the spreadsheet that I don't you wrote it on. The pic the picture files aren't there. They it's a column Y. It's a URL to the picture. Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, I do have access to that then, yes. Yeah, and then there is a, there is a primary speaker biography for anybody where there is um, a secondary like a, speaker. A, yeah, a co-speaker. I don't. We probably don't have the picture or the bio, so we'll have to get those from people. If if someone has a a, a link to that document, could they send it to me real quick? So I, I'm having trouble tracking it down. I'll send it to you in a private chat. Thank you. Oh, yeah, because yeah, the document actually has scores on it. Yeah, it has scores and email addresses and stuff that's private. Um, but uh, access is restricted, so people shouldn't be able to see it unless they have access to it. It's not one of those. If you have the link, you have access. Um, it does look like Ray is tracking attendance confirmed. Oh, yeah. As a... Yeah. Oh, perfect. Uh, yes. So... This discussion prompted me to email Ray that we'd be there <laughs> for my talk. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a column AC has the attendance confirmed. Um, oh, box. So we do have some of them have been confirmed already. So we can add those to the website. Um, the other the other one that we need to add to the website, Georg, is your whatever we decide to call your kind of welcome slash state of the chaos community talk at the very beginning. Yeah. I think so the way that I, in the past, I built the schedule is I went to the schedule sheet in the spreadsheet, and then that's what I used. And so keynote, well, I don't think mine is a keynote. It's a welcome and state of chaos. It's a keynote, Georg. Put it on your resume. It's a keynote. Okay. Nobody cares. <laughs> it's a keynote. You're super important, but nobody cares. Is, well, I mean, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's weird. It's this weird thing where it's like, what constitutes a keynote? If some somebody says it's a keynote, it's a keynote. So it's a keynote. Okay. And it matters more to your CV than it does to any of us. We don't care what you call it. Okay. So that's the status on ChaosCon. We're waiting for replies from speakers, and then. Did we give a deadline for when we wanted to post the schedule? I feel like we do have that somewhere. Monday is sent out and then schedule announcement on Thursday. Mm -hmm. This week? Yeah. yeah. Today is Tuesday back in America. Yes, we do. Uh, we do want to get, um, we do want to get the schedule announced because that's going to drive registration and we need to get that out before people start disappearing for Christmas. And if any if people are like me, some of us are starting to disappear on the 16th. So, so that's kind of designed to sort of head off the, the holidays and get people thinking about it before the holidays. Cause we do want to get people registered and make sure that it's in their travel plans for FOSDEM. And I've been receiving a few registrations like one or two a day over the last two, three, four days. Oh, good. Where are we on venue stuff? So have we confirmed um, lunch and coffees and is everything all set with the Ebus Hotel? Yes, I spoke with um, Ebus. They, the person who uh, was my contact was on vacation for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so she's back. And I agreed with her that um, beginning of January, I think three weeks before the conference, I confirmed final numbers and uh, get all that sorted out. Cool. Did you, uh, do you get to pick the menu? It's a buffet. So everyone can choose themselves what they have, want to have. Um, there are vegetarian options. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, get to pick what's on the buffet? I didn't ask. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be all bratwurst and sauerkraut and mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah. That's my choice. 
If it was here, it would be like mini tacos and uh, weird dips, right? <laughs> I can add dips for the bratwurst. You know, like mustard. Bratwurst. <laughs> I never know if you're German or from Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, otherwise, I think we are pretty good with uh, ChaosCon right now. I don't have anything else. Um, who, who is going to work with uh, the Linux Foundation on promoting the schedule and registration? I think that was Matt. Yeah, I think Matt was going to get us in the registration system, but I don't. Was he going to do promotion as well? Like, and I don't, was there a way that we want to promote it? Because aren't we at capacity? So every time Matt sends them an email, they're going to tweet about it. And he did after the last time we talked, and they tweeted about it. Um, but that's the extent of what's happening. At least I don't see anything else happening. Samantha, you probably have a lot more ideas about how to market the event. <laughs> I mean, yes, but it, I also don't necessarily have the context. So if you want me to do like some suggestions, I'm fine with that, but I really don't know where you're at. Well, we have a conference website and we are tweeting about it. And we are reaching out to people individually and in other venues to invite them. Um, that's the marketing extent that we have. Are you doing any affiliate outreach? Do you have any specific um, speakers, organizers, um, abstract producers? Do you have anyone like that who can market the event third party for you? Hmm. So we should probably, I think it would be good for you maybe to have a conversation with Matt to talk about what we've done so far. Um, and, and the, yeah, it's almost nothing. We need help desperately. <laughs> um, so I think Matt can maybe help provide the context or if he's not around, probably any, any of the rest of us could as well. But I think, I'm not sure what you exactly what you meant by affiliate, but I do think that um, we, we should be asking some of the speakers to do some additional promotions for us. So like Deb Nicholson, um, who's part of the Software Freedom Conservancy, she can help maybe do some promotions through some of their channels um, and get some of the other, like uh, um, we, uh, we have a speaker from Apache, maybe we can get some, some stuff promoted through some of these other, other channels. And we haven't really, yeah, we haven't paid a concerted effort to do that in the past, we probably should. The, the next push for that is probably on the schedule release. Yes. And, and then exactly. I, would, I would add that the, the other group that, that we're kind of marketing through is that the, the Seco Health group. Right. Tom, Tom Menz does that group, right? Yeah. And I think the right same group. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, and I've you, been doing little bits of promotion through the to do group as well to try and get open source. Um, program office people there, which we should have quite a few, to be honest, because we have a to-do group meeting, um, uh, I think the Wednesday before Chaos Con at FOSDEM. So most of us should be around. We, we generally get pretty good numbers for these. I know there was a little bit of an issue with some people registering for the, uh, the last one and not showing up, but I mean, we're, we're usually getting 50 to 70 people at these events. So I don't, I don't know that uh, promotion is a, a huge issue for us. I thought we're not at capacity then. For some reason, or am I, I'm thinking of the, maybe the fall one where we end up at capacity, but it seems like we can safely oversell this thing by about 25% if we want to fill the room. Right. I will have to update the event right uh, event. I, I mean, an easy low-hanging fruit option is to just put together a digital marketing toolkit and then just provide that toolkit to anyone who would like to advertise. Oh, that's a really good idea. You should, you should come to our uh, communication meetings. 
I mean, yeah, I'm I'm here. Please use me. I'm Vanessa. I hope. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Okay. So okay, I have to I have to drop. Sorry, I've got another call. I was about to say we're at the top of the hour. So thank you everyone. And um, I'll just leave it there. I know we didn't resolve the marketing issue. Um, who is putting together the schedule uh, for the website? Uh, historically, that has been you. I know. Uh, are, you, uh, are you wanting someone else to do it? Is that I'm what asking you're if anyone wants I'm to do another meeting too. See you, Sean. Okay, I'll, um, I'll ask for help on the mailing list. Before I do it, um, I'd rather have open it up and see if anyone wants to volunteer. I am I am certainly willing to help with it as well, uh, but I would uh, I would prefer not to take on the task entirely by myself. So yeah. Well, if no one else volunteers, and I know you'd already do a lot of the website work, Kevin. So. I'll post on the mailing list and then see if anyone replies. So can I say not. one thing, but it's it's an incomplete thought about that. I, I want to ease into the website space. I just don't want to make a commitment right now in this time we're in right now. Um, but generally, I would like to ease in and help with website, um, you know, grow in that space over time. Um, so I, I could start getting my feet wet a bit there. But, um, you know, if I could commit, and, and and be reliable, I would have made the offer as I'll take it on. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to be reliable for a few things, maybe. Okay. What do you, do you have time today or tomorrow to um, take the schedule that we have? I will share the spreadsheet with you um, and put it into a markdown table. Uh, yeah, um, sure. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that that's that's yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and so the process we have is the website then just goes to the markdown and pulls that information. Yeah, no, like I, I don't mind like doing off, you know, ad hoc things like that, definitely. So uh just you know, like having a long task that takes a week or two and you know, checkpoints yeah. and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure I'm structured enough to handle this at this point. So Okay. All right. I have another um, call here as well, um, but Sala, if I can just ping you later, then I can coordinate with you on how to perfect you can contribute here. Yeah, can, sir. I, can I get some more information on the communication um, meeting? <laughs> that seems like that would be somewhere I can help. Uh, so we actually uh, we don't have any meetings scheduled currently, uh, but there. So it's the, it's the content group. Right, so there are uh, there are four or five of us that uh, kind of focus on maintaining uh, uh, communication structure across all of the work groups. Right, so we're concerned with the website. Uh,